September 16th, 2021. FOMA 400 had been developed in HC 110, and I got creamy smooth grain using a Zeiss Icon 521-2 with a Tessar lens at 6 seconds and 5 seconds at f32. That was a big surprise. So I wanted to prove that that would work in a Pentax 6x7. I had one more roll of FOMA and that's what I did and that's what we're going to see scanned today. I have a new method of scanning also and a new set of plastic sleeves. What I learned yesterday about density and exposure was applied to a new roll of FOMA today to prove it. And it was done in a Pentax 6x7 with a 135mm macro lens. The light meter was used and no adjustments were made for darker light subjects. But a new battery was put in. When I moved the shutter speed dial, it was quite stiff and it stopped in between two numbers and then the lens stayed open. When I moved it onto one of the numbers, then the lens closed. So shot number two was messed up and it would go right there. So the nine pictures all fit into one plastic sleeve and I'm um, scanning the entire thing instead of each individual one. I can't even scan a whole roll of film at one time. Here's the 8x10 scanner, Scanjet 4050. You have to keep it below a certain level and above a certain line. It will do the information. I use view scan. This is an old one. I haven't ever updated it. It is set to input professional black and white negative 8-bit gray and 300 dpi. Under filter there's no infrared cleaning. Under color it's neutral and these are default options. I'm going to change that to 400. The output will be JPEG. So preview. The scanner has a tube in it that has to warm up. After it warms up, you can swap sheets and it'll scan very quickly. But it takes a minute to warm up. Now if you use auto, each picture will be bigger than the desktop. It'll be monstrously large. So, there's your basic scan. And the preview looks too light. Here you can adjust your cropping. That's basically what I had before, but moved it some. Now in color, I can change the brightness. So I'll just change the brightness to be darker. And there. Now it's great. Now all you do is press scan. And it's done. A new package arrived from B&H and in it is some Tri-X 400 film, I hope. Tri-X anyway. And plastic sleeves made for 6x9 along with the book that they fit into. So I will not have to use two pages anymore, although I will not be able to scan them completely in one go. I'll have to do individual scans or make two scans of the one sheet. I haven't figured that out yet. I might get a light table 
and just take a photograph of it. So oh, there they are. Now I've been using FOMA and Arista film. I did quite a bit of TMY2 that I had left over and they came out gorgeously. So I wanted to try some Tri-X. I splurged. Now the idea of buying these new sleeves in this book that they fit into, both of which are larger than a normal 8x10, the idea is that I could fit one roll on each page. One roll of 6x9 will fit on one page. The way it is now, I need two pages for 6x9, and I also need two pages for 6x7. So I think 6x7 will also fit on one page. These pages are made for the square format of 6x6, and an entire roll fits on it. But I don't have a 6x6 camera other than a crappy little Ansco folder that has pinholes. But I did take some really nice looking color reversal pictures with it years ago. I might patch it up and use it again. This is a major investment for me. The total for these three things was $87 negative preserves. That's 120 rolls of film. This is five rolls of film. Oh well. This works. Okay. No problem. The page fits on the scanner. But the problem is you have a picture left over that doesn't fit, so you have to throw one away, which I usually do anyway because I'm messing so many up, but not so much anymore. The other thing is, it takes two sheets to do one roll of 6x9. Only two fit in a slot, so if you get them all, you need four slots. And that's what these are. The width of this, and they go sideways, is the same as the height of this. That's the clincher. Now I plan on making contact sheets under the enlarger in the dark room. And I have a lot of extra paper, so I'll just put a piece of paper and do one contact sheet. I don't need to do digital scans. But like I say, I could hold this on a light table and take a digital photograph of it. Bam. Very quick. Inside, these just pop right out. Inside it's a three ring binder. And you could probably hold more than one of these packages in it. Okay, here they are. All the sheets are in the binder and there's lots of room for more sheets. Two, maybe three packages will fit in here. Now the instructions say emulsion side down and insert from the side. So they will not have to be removed from the binder put the film in from the side. Emulsion side down, slide it in. So that would be Three, six, nine, and one more ten. That would be a six by seven. Two, four, six, eight would be a six by nine. Three, six, nine, twelve would be a six by six. So if anybody asks why your photographs are so expensive, you'll be able to tell them.